Welcome to Mick and the Psychic, where we leave no stone unturned as we explore all things outside the apparent physical realm. There is no intent to teach or make you believe or disbelieve anything. It is just a safe space to listen and explore with us. So for this next episode, you have permission to open your heart and mind as you join myself and Xavier on this deep dive into the unknown. Standing over by your bookcase, there's a man dressed in black. He's got black hair, he's got a long black coat, and he's rubbing his fingers across your books. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up, and I thought, oh shit. Episode we have back with us uh, by popular demand, not by people that listen to the show, but by him emailing us every single week saying, <laughs> when can we come back on the show? It is none other than the wonderful Steve Burgess, hypnotherapist uh, champion. I didn't write an intro because this guy is actually my supervisor and my mentor and uh, the guy I like to have most uh, make most fun of, I should say. Um, but Steve Burgess has been doing hypnotherapy for nearly as long as I've been alive. Uh, he has been, I found a, um, a uh, what was it? A documentary on um, alien abductions and this very young, dapper, actually you look a lot better now than you did then, but that was the early nineties. Um, Steve Burgess <laughs> comes in with a suitcase as a hypnotherapist uh, to help them with that. So pretty amazing. He's been doing it for a very long time and top of the game for a very long time. He won't tell you that, but he is. Um, he's got a book, um, The Power of Past Life Regression, um, Famous Past Lives. Um, his YouTube channel, Hypno For All, is just a way that he was looking at getting this hypnosis out there and accessible to lots of people. So there's lots of wonderful recordings. It's not the same as doing it in person, but sometimes it can actually be enough for you to explore within. Um, so Hypno for All is a beautiful um, YouTube channel. That'll be in our, our show notes. He's got Lionheart Training, uh, where he trains um, a lot of people in a lot of different methods, including NLP and hypnosis and advanced regression and a whole lot of other stuff. Um, but Steve Burgess, welcome to the show again. You finally got your part back. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I can't believe I'm back, actually. I thought I was rubbish the last time. So You were. You were. <laughs> I'm giving you a second go because I like you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't believe it was so bad last time. You can't be that bad again. Sure. <laughs> that's right. The only way is that. <laughs> Well, that's quite an introduction. I'm quite impressed. That sounds quite plausible. You, it is. Yeah. Well, it was all true, even the stuff where I'm taking the piss. But um, <laughs> this this episode, we wanted you back. Obviously, um, you're an expert on regression and um, all things exploring the subconscious or higher self rather than just hypnosis for, for changing um, behaviours and patterns. Um, and because of the way you work with that explorative style, Stuff comes up that potentially you weren't expecting or anyone was expecting. Um, so I'd love to talk a little bit more about things like um, spirit release and, and other spiritual encounters that happen um, under hypnosis. But to start it off with, <laughs> what, what makes this kind of hypnosis open to stuff that even you as the therapist isn't expecting? Mm. Well, question that's a big question as well yeah. um i think partly because the client's subconscious is in control of the process right so we as you know we don't lead um the clients usually the client subconscious goes where it needs to go and that's important because a lot of people think especially with regression that the therapist is leading the client into past lives and implanting things and giving them visions of what they should be seeing according to what the therapist thinks should be happening. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't happen in proper regression. The, the client's subconscious, it knows where the, the client needs to go. And we can get ourselves out of the way very often and allow the subconscious to take us where we need to go and to take the client where we need to go. So quite often we're following the client. We're not sort of jumping in and making them do things. So that's, I think that's important. And the client's subconscious, I mean, we talk a lot about the subconscious and conscious minds. <laughs> and for me, the old-fashioned um, sort of Freudian explanation of the subconscious uh, is very limiting. You know, the idea that the, the mind is an iceberg and the tip of the iceberg is the conscious thinking mind and 
beneath the the 99.9 percent .9 of the iceberg is the subconscious yeah um which gives an example of the power of the subconscious because yes. it's 99 times more powerful than the conscious mind you could say yeah but it also misses what i feel is an important fact and this is a viewpoint I've come to after, as you know, over 30 years doing this work, that the subconscious, I think we all have a higher self, which is like an all-knowing, all-wise part of us. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't see this in some sort of new-agey, flaky way. Uh, for me, it, it, this is more of a sort of a psychological higher self, you could say. And mm. the subconscious for me either is our higher self or is intimately connected to it. And so when we're working with the subconscious, we're working with this all-knowing, all-wise part of the client. And, okay, some client subconsciouses maybe are a little bit, um, you could say, less developed than others. Mm. But when we're working with a client subconscious, which is on our wavelength, a, the, the speed of the work is extraordinary. The results come a lot faster than traditional therapy. And B, the subconscious knows where it needs to take the client. So, yeah. um, you know, regression, for example, we regress into this life, we regress into past lives, we regress into ancestors' lives. And a lot of people don't realize that we inherit traumas from our ancestors. So that's one sort of... Um, slightly quirky aspect of regression most people know about regression into childhood and rebirthing yeah. where we relive the time of our birth but uh, but to actually go into an ancestor's life and relive something that your great great grandmother experienced in her life that traumatized her so much that the energy of that trauma has been passed down perhaps through the genes to you as the client that can sort of shake people's boots a little bit when that starts to happen. It yeah. would shake their boots, but then they're also discovering that maybe some of this stuff that they can't explain that's going on in their life, like, has a reason. Like, how wonderful <laughs> that would be to understand yourself a bit more and think, I'm not crazy or I don't know because I didn't know why this was an issue for me. Like, it's actually passed down for my great-great-grandmother. That's fascinating. Yes. Wow. And, and that's a good, good point, Xavier, because most regression is releasing trauma and healing yeah. in that way. But mm. the other main aspect of regression is for the client to get a sense of understanding mm. about why mm. they are like they are. And mm. that understanding very often is just so therapeutic, as you say, it's just wonderful. Yeah. I, I, I wonder sometimes as well um, with ancestral lives, when um, that comes up in regression, there's a really um, feels like there's a stronger connection when they experience that ancestral life. It's like because they're not as separated, like they um, they may have a good uh, or a relationship at least with their parents, and maybe they've met their grandparents before, or maybe they've even met the person they're doing the ancestral life work with. There's a strange like um, I don't know, like they're closer to the experience that they're having than say a Macedonian warrior in the bronze age. Yeah, could be, could be. Um, yeah. It's a good, and it's difficult to explain the quality of that, Michael. Isn't yeah. It? But there, they are, there is a depth. It's a depth to the experience. I think that's a, that's the word that I'll probably use. We love interviewing experts from different fields about all things outside the apparent physical realm. And the one constant is these phenomena are transmitted through energy. So we sought out and teamed up with Subtle Energy Science. To bring you, our listeners, energetic encoded technology you can use in your phone, laptop, computer, or tablet. Turning your device into a powerful personal quantum energy tool. Now, we're not the creators or are we qualified enough to explain it at all, but there is a mind-blowing number of scientific studies available on their website. We get to try their range ourselves so we can give an honest review. And until the end of April, we've got 20% off The Mystic with promo code MATP-861. And I love using The Mystic. I love it more than anything else. And I notice it really helps if you want to open up your heart or tune in to a deeper awareness. Now back to the show. Um, and, and it opens people's minds as to just how also, and this is the other thing, is how it's important not to pass our traumas down to our children. Okay. So um, is that know, possible? 
Oh, absolutely. It just okay. goes down the line. No, so, possible not to. I mean, <laughs> oh, see, I mean, well, I, I think if you if, I, do work on yourself, you know, if you've got yeah. a lot of trauma, especially when you're young, before you have a family, yeah, do work on yourself to work on traumas that you that happened to you that need to be mm. released, and then you're mm. not going to pass them down. Obviously, if you don't do the work and you've then got children, then that's maybe too late. Well, then you can like, so what I've noticed, um, there's so much that I've learned since I've had children and mine, I sort of learned so much when they were already growing up and becoming, starting to become teenagers. Mm, mm. And then I've realized, but we have, I've They're cleared good teachers. <laughs> yeah, I've cleared everything. Um, and then I've noticed, say one of my brothers, he's cleared his stuff when his children are very young. And so he's teaching them from a very young age and helping them. Whereas I'm doing with my kids older, but we get to have lots of discussions about the patterns and recognizing things. And so now I've noticed with my daughters, especially because they're older and they're girls, they just communicate a bit better, um, that they recognize traits in people and in themselves that they already want to work on. Um, it's not the deep stuff that's um, in your subconscious, but it's, I love that even like because I've worked on some stuff, they're recognizing it. So they're already set to go before they have kids. So it's like you get better every generation. But I know that all the things I've cleared on myself I actually feel like even though they're already born, the connection that we have, if I clear some of the generational trauma, it's, it is going to help them anyway. Do you think that's possible? Because you're saying better I if the born is. must be yeah. late. But. Yeah, I mean, I've, my there's two ways of looking at this. Yeah. One is work <laughs> on yourself and it will the energies with people who are close to you, it will change their energies as okay. well because we are so connected. Yeah. However, I'm also a believer that we all have our own original pain work yes. to do. Okay. And so um, I don't think it's always possible to fully clear mm, uh, somebody yeah. else's stuff um, yep. in that way. But okay. I mean, you know, well done to you. Well, I'm patronizing, but well done to you for intelligent parenting. I mean, that's fantastic. Mm. <laughs> Eventually, I feel like I wish I had known some of this stuff earlier, but that's just how it went. Yeah. And I suppose yeah. some learn soon before they have kids, some learn when they're young, some learn when they're older, some don't learn like my parents. Because of what my brother and I have gone through, they're learning now with they've got grandkids. Mm, and they're thinking yeah. of what they've done with their grandkids. I thought, oh, I could have done that better. And now they're learning more. So I love yes. that everyone's being emotionally mature now and, and working on themselves and trying to be better, which is really good. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, one of the important things is just to apologize to your kids for screwing things up. Yeah, I have. have the honesty <laughs> to apologize to your kids for screwing things up for I've them. <laughs> I've done that so much. I just, I, I just want to do a quick shout out to my dad. I'm not a product of your screw up. It's okay, dad. You did your best. I am what I am. You did your best. Sometimes parents can just do at their best and then the world takes yeah. them. So, you know, that's fine. Good. Yeah. So I love so, that you can visit this with hypnotherapy. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> But again, just going back to your question at the start, sort of mm. odd thing, you know, odd things that can come through in uh, in regression or in therapy. Um, and going on slightly from what you were saying there as well, Xavier, is something called surrogate regression. Mm. This is something I've been experimenting with for the past year or two, mm -hmm. um, which is because I've always said it's you know, we, we can only do our own original pain work, but it may be, and I know you often, you work to clear stuff for other people. There is this idea of doing surrogate work to clear somebody else's stuff by working on yourself for them. Um, and I've been experimenting with that for the past couple of years. And uh, I can't remember, did I talk about this the last time I came on with the dog, when I did therapy on Ooh. a dog? No, I don't think I don't think you did because there's a whole lot of stuff. This is why I wanted you back on. Yeah, there's, there's no a lot of things going about. on. It's like I want to know how you're experimenting with surrogate. Yeah, but, yeah, and, and the... yeah. Well, what what happened is I'm gonna there's a buckle up, everyone. It's about to get weird. <laughs> yeah, it's about to get weird now. One of my um, dear therapy colleagues who's a wonderful hypnotherapist in Ireland, and uh, she contacted me one day and she said, "I'm." Um, I've got a new dog, <clears throat> had her for several months now. She's a rescue dog. And she said, I love her to bits. And she's a very beautiful soul. Because some dogs some dogs seem to be what I call therapy dogs. Uh, the mm. spiritual dogs are much more mm. wise than many dogs are. <laughs> and in fact, her previous dog that she had years ago was a spiritual dog. Um, and uh, she said, I love her to bits, but she's a pain in the ass. <laughs> 
um, you know, she will not she she won't come on they're trying to you know we're not nasty with her but she's not she's difficult to be around um and she follows me like a bloody shadow you know she'll be walking in the kitchen and turn around and the dogs there <laughs> the dogs there and I'll fall over um she said do you think and now she said I've been in touch with an animal seer in New Zealand and this animal seer has in tuned into the dog um, and told me that the dog has told her that um, there are several past lives that need to be cleared, as well as some traumas in the present life. And in fact, my um, friend sent me the report from the animal seer wow. in New Zealand. It was about eight pages long. What? It was quite extraordinary. Really? Um, and she tuned in psychically or telepathically and had this conversation with the dog. Um, so my friend said, well, do you think it's, is it possible, Burgess, to do regression on me for the dog? So I said, no idea, but why don't we try? That's what I love about you. You're nuts. <laughs> I'm seeing the link now as well. That's right. It's really good. Because the, yeah. the answer is no, and you've gone, I don't know. Let's see. Give it a go. <laughs> I love you know, that. I've experimented so many different ways over the last yeah. 30 years being doing this work. And, yeah, well, you know you're not in control. I think going back to what you said at the start, without making fun of you, you understand what your role is and your role isn't leading someone to something your role is holding that space to allow that to lead so because of your understanding you can say i don't know let's try not just because you're a nutcase so anyway continue i'm sorry <laughs> That's cool. I am a nutcase as well but you know if it doesn't work we're only going to waste a couple of hours so let's yeah that's right goes. why not um so we did a zoom session and um i guided her into trance now the dog was in a different part of the house was not around so the dog didn't hear anything um and she went into a past life in the second world war mm -hmm. where my client was a, a nazi um soldier a german soldier in the second world war and it, she was a male soldier and she was um a guard in a uh, not necessarily a concentration camp, but a prison, a, 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 you know, a prison camp that the Nazis were running. Mm -hmm. um, and the dog now was her dog then. So she had a guard dog and oh. they spent 24 hours a day together. You know? So the dog was a dog. Yes. The dog was a dog. Yeah. Okay. And so they spent all day long sort of g g patrolling the perimeter fence, going round and round, looking for you know, breaks in the fence if anybody had tried to get out, and, you know, just generally guard, doing guard duties. Now, what happened after a while is that my client, as the, as the soldier, was very, very unhappy with what was going on in the camp. And he allowed some prisoners to escape. Um, and he got caught and they shot him. No missing, they just killed, shot him. Mm -hmm. So immediately the dog who had been around her owner 24 hours a day is completely bereft. He's been taken away and the dog then gets looked after by somebody else. Mm -hmm. And so um, we worked through that trauma and released it for my clients. And I brought her out of trance and, and she was quite amazed that, that this had come through. Um, and so I said, well, let's, you know, see what happens after this session. And we booked a set another appointment for two weeks later. At the next session, she said there's been a considerable improvement in her behavior, in the dog's behavior, a marked improvement. Um, and in fact, she said, she's no longer following me as if she's oh. my shadow. Oh. So that trauma, she was obviously the dog was thinking, I've got to be close to her because she's going to die any time. So I've got to be close all the time. The dog was relieving the trauma from the past life. Interesting. Um, and wanted to be with my client all the time because she was scared she was going to die. Um, but my client also said, I'm just, she said, I realized after the session that when I take the dog for walks in the countryside, in the fields, um, and she lives in Southern Ireland, and she said, when we I walk through the middle of the field and the dog goes to the outside of the field and walks around the perimeter mm. of the field, mm. walks around looking through the hedges at all the holes in the hedges, and I can't get her to come. I couldn't get her to come to me. 
Wow. So of course the dog was still doing this behavior, going around the perimeter fence in a concentration camp, in a prisoner of war camp. Wow. Um, so we did another session, and this also moves into something which we sometimes find in past lives, is clients have had lives on other planets as other life forms. Wow. So we haven't we don't always have human life forms. Occasionally we'll have clients in past lives who have had animal life forms. But in this case, my client and the dog were on an, um, another race on some of the planets. And they'd been, um, they were sort of like, um, what can we say, soldiers maybe on a spacecraft. And they'd been away from their home planet for a long time. Finally, they came back home to their planet. And to find that they, they docked the spaceship in, in this city, and the city was completely empty. There was nobody around at all. And they didn't know what on earth was going on. And then suddenly this sort of green fog suddenly appears coming from some sort of vents. And it then attacks them and kills them both. So obviously that is what some, this green fog was some form of entity that had destroyed the population of that city or perhaps of that planet. Yeah. Um, which is weird stuff. And uh, so we re again, we released that. We did another, a bit more work in a regression on the dog um, in a past life being hit with an axe and um, being badly injured with an axe. And, and again, it was a dog in the, that past life. Right, yeah. Um, so we did three or four or five sessions like this. And there was one particular session where the day after the session, my client emailed me and she said we finished the session last night steve and i went downstairs and the dog was with my boyfriend i have we have never seen her so joyful the rest of that evening wow. she had so much joy it was extraordinary it was as if something had lifted from her um and there was a significant improvement in the dog's behavior i actually talked with this therapist this friend a few weeks ago and she said she's she's so different, so much improved as a result of those sessions. So that sort of maybe that made me start to think, okay, maybe surrogate regression, which is where we do regression for somebody else, is a viable possibility using my model of regression, which is different to Xavier's model. We, we as we know, we work yeah. differently. Um, okay. But using my model, this is this is possible. So. I then had, um, again, a therapist friend who's in Oslo in Norway, um, and she contacted me because her boyfriend, sorry, her husband, was having panic attacks and severe anxieties. Right. And she wondered the same. She said, he, you know, he's a big, airy bloke. He doesn't want to have therapy. Um, is it possible for you to work on me for him? So, again, I said, we'll, we'll do it. We'll see what happens. Um, and so again, we did some regression and, and she relived some of his childhood traumas. He'd, had, uh, he'd been in the former Yugoslavia at the time of the civil war, so yeah. he'd seen some horrible things as a kid. Horrific stuff. And also yeah. some of his past life stuff as well. Um, and we released a lot of that. And there was, again, a marked significant improvement with his anxieties, a significant reduction. Did he, did you need... And I, and I mean, it's still like working out if this thing works or not. Did she get permission from him to do that work? Should that happen, do you think? Like no, that now that you know it's <laughs> impossible or does it matter? Well, I mean, ask a dog. Yeah. Not a psychic. Can't ask a dog. If you're not a psychic. This is a difficult question. I mean, I've, I've raised this, you know, when I, when I started to talk about this subject with I have a, a, a therapist community that I, uh, that I yeah. sort of oversee. Um, and Michael, as you know, is a member yeah. of that. And, and yeah. you know, we discussed this and several of the therapists were saying, you should have asked permission. You should always ask permission. Um, another therapist, as, as Xavier is saying, well, ask the dog. It doesn't matter. You know, if so I think it's a difficult one. If your yeah. belief system is you should ask, then you should ask. If your belief system is, well, I'm working with my heart to get somebody better. And... It's releasing you know, an emotion. They don't yeah. need to know. It's going to help them to get better. So why on earth do we need permission? Yeah. So that would be my approach. But I do respect there are other people who say, no, always get permission. 
And if that's their model, they should do that. Can I please add to your story as a bit of a confirmation from the psychic version of the, um, the past life release? Um, so for, for that part you were just saying about the permission, I um, say I'm doing something for a client and they're talking about wanting to know if they've got a past life with their sister, for example. Yeah, okay, yeah. They specifically know, they're just curious um, because of issues or because of their wonderful connection or whatever it is they want to know. Um I sort of I don't need to call up the sister and ask their permission if I clear it. I okay. just tune in and ask. <laughs> I have been told no before, so then I yes. haven't done it. And that's not just for that. That's for another thing I do called theatre healing where I'm helping clear things. I never do anything on a, for a third person without tuning in and asking first. But I feel there, it's like the same as mediumship to me. I feel like a spirit energy will come in. It's the same when I'm we're talking about somebody else that is alive the energy comes into the room and I feel it. So I'll get goosebump confirmation, but not everyone can do that. So I would, what I just got shown when you're talking about is because of the connection with the person and the animal or the other person you're talking about, you could muscle test them to ask permission for the other person. Well, that, I'm glad you said that actually. Uh, I was going to say, go for it, Steve. Yeah. It's something we always do. Yeah. Also, my regression system uh, yeah. that, I, that I've sort of created over the years is that once the client is in trance, we get what's called an idiomotor response, which is where the client's subconscious, let's say, takes control of a finger. It makes it very free and weightless. And we just use the movement of the finger uh, to signal yes. So this is the subconscious then can say yes or no. So um, the, the movement of the finger is a yes or a movement of the hand is yes. The hand or the finger being stationary is no. And I always ask permission. Mm. Is it okay for us to do this work? Mm -hmm. And if the subconscious says no, then, and it's and, it, and we negotiate and it still says no, then we don't <laughs> do it. it. Well, we ask, but, um, is there something else that yeah. we can do? And nearly always it'll come up and say yes. So you'll figure yeah. it out. So you can muscle test. You can do the same thing for the... We do that. Through the other person, you can ask because they're... If you're connected with a higher self, it's the same thing I call it. They can all connect it. We're all connected. So you're just asking permission via them. So, yes. yeah, I love that. Yeah. Can I, mean, I remember clearly, I mean, I had one client who was uh, he's a business, a CEO of a, of a big company, and he came for therapy. And, you know, he had his suit and his tie on and his, you know, very posh, his briefcase down the side of my chair. Um, and he came to my office and... Um, you know, I guide him into trance and I do this questioning, you know, with a finger response, uh, you know, is there anything in this life that's caused the problem we're working on? And he said, no. Are there any past lives? No. I'm thinking, okay, it could be ancestral. Are there any ancestral traumas? No. Oh, job he's done. That'll be 140 pounds. <laughs> Thanks for coming. All in your head? <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> and so then I just asked another question. Are, are there any spirit attachment? Bang, finger went straight. Why did you ask that yes. in the first Why? place? Good yes. question. That, 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 that just pop because, in your head like a psychic? Or? No, it's my it's my fourth question out of experience. I know that if, if you, you have a fourth three, question. Okay. When did yeah, that fourth, fourth question, question yeah. come up? But why? Why is that a fourth question? Where did yeah. that come I'm it taking it Because um, <laughs> when, when I first did my hypnotherapy training, um, and there were people on the training course who were training with me, um, one in particular who had had a lot of experience doing spirit release work. And I was saying, yeah, come on, that's baloney, <laughs> isn't it? You know, I mean, okay, I believe in ghosts and stuff like that. I used to own a haunted restaurant, but for spirits to sort of connect to people. Season, he's just locked in season three. Thank you. <laughs> we have stories about that. Jesus. Haunted restaurant. Um, just locked in season three appearance. Well done, Burjo. Sorry, we got, we got distracted. We got distracted. Talking, <laughs> talking to, the, to them about yeah. it, they, they were really very clear. This is real stuff, Burgess. You know, this is not, this is not some wacky weirdo stuff this is real stuff and so um i then got hold of the book uh, the unquiet dead by dr edith fiore um, and she's an american psychologist or was who worked in traditional psychological ways as a psychologist but over the years i can't remember how she did she sort of fell into 
playing with spirit attachments, you could say, that quite a lot of her clients, her patients, appear to have spirit attachments. And then she would go through a protocol to release the attachments and send them home. So I read that with interest. And um, I think it was in the early days that when you've got a no, no, no as a therapist, is there anything in this life? No. Any past lives? No. Any ancestral traumas? No. You're then thinking, shit, now what am I going to do? <laughs> and so it came from somewhere, you know, are there any spirits? Yeah. Bing! Yes. Love okay. that. So I then, fortunately, I'd read Edith Fiore's book, so I, I had a bit of an idea, and I went through her protocol as best I could remember it. And it seemed to work. The the spirits seemed to leave, and um, the client got better. And he left my office with scratching his head, thinking, what the hell was all that about? Wow. Um, I don't make this a, a question. I don't ask it as a question very often because... would need to get to most it. clients... Yeah, like. they need to get... Well, most clients have come for help with a phobia or depression or yes. anxiety or something or relationships they come here to relation anything they haven't come here to sort of this weird woo woo stuff about spirit attachments so you know and usually even if they have attachments and i haven't asked if we do good regression and we release a lot of the traumas very often the spirits will leave anyway because it hasn't got that negative energy to, energy to feed yeah. on. Is that what Just it is? To say that. Nothing to feed on. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Because the reason they attach to people usually is because our energies attract them. Because it's classic if we're in pain, if we're depressed, if we're unhappy, our energy is low. And I, I say our energy is spiky. And it makes us easy to grip on. Can I add to that also drug addicted? Oh, yeah, alcohol as well. Yeah, yeah. lower yeah. vibration from drugs and alcohol. Thank you. And, yeah. Yeah, and trauma. Totally they feed yeah. off that energy and they stay there. So it's very hard to turn or get out of that. Yeah. yeah. Help like. It can happen if you, if you, you know, you've been in hospital for a while. Yes. You know, there's, yes. there's lots oh. of dead people in hospital. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can come out of hospital and you've got an attachment. I picked up one outside the BBC building in London years ago. Bring that, um, that story. Let's go. Um, well, that was my shamanic story. So I'm gonna lose track of what you were gonna say, but get go on. <laughs> but, <laughs> do you want that story or are we gonna talk about like, No, 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 we'll go that's season four. All right, geez. Okay. Righto, Steve. <laughs> Save some for the next seasons. You're good. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. You got excited. You got just excited. Give me my own series, that's all. Um, <laughs> so, Maybe you should have your own podcast. <laughs> no, 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 no competition. That'd be good. Um, <laughs> So no, so it, it just started yep. to happen over the years that, you know, I, I started to ask that question more and more often. Um, and more and more clients appear to have had spirit, appear to have spirits attached to them. So I think it's quite significant. I think more people um, have attachments than we realize have attachments. And, um, and, and in most cases, I think what we should say, though, is most cases, these spirits are just lost, confused, scared. So there are some nasty ones, and I'll tell you about my nasty one experience as well as part of this. Mm -hmm. it's important. But, mm. you know, we, we've often been told, oh, well, everything in the spirit world is nice and bright and lovely. Now it ain't. <laughs> there is a dark side to it. Oh, my and Lord. So I used to be... Careful. I used to be in denial about that too when I was started off my business and that I'm all fluffy and rainbows and none of that is true. Yeah, I learned yeah. differently. It doesn't mean I attract it. Like I don't, no, no, not that many clients come to me, but I have had experience definitely and cleared some. I would love yeah. to know how, when you ask that question, how does it come up for your, because I'm just comparing this to what I know from all the psychic kind of people listening. How does it get recognized? How do they describe it to you? And what do you do to release it? Usually the client doesn't describe anything. Okay. In most cases, they just have this issue, this depression, and that's the classic one. Um, mm -hmm. And they just want fixing. They want help to be fixed. Mm -hmm. um, and when I ask the question, the subconscious tells me. So then I go through a process. Now, there are different ways of doing this. And I mean, certainly, for example, I, I'm one lady who was a therapist uh, who came on one of my training courses um, she took the spirits through her and sent them, took them away through her, out of the client. And Why do it? <laughs> okay. 
that's that was her way of doing it. Yeah, um, cool. Th there are other people who dialogue with the spirits, and they'll get the spirit if they can to take over the client's body Ooh, and yep. to talk with them. Which I've, I've tried, and it doesn't work very well. Most of the time, the client just learned they're thinking, "Well, I don't feel anything. There's nothing happening." So okay. nothing comes through. Mm. But I think you've got to be careful that you don't give too much energy to the spirit. If you start dialogue with it. Yeah. You don't need to know, in most mm. cases, what the problem is, why it's there. We, it just needs to know that what it is doing is wrong. Mm. It's actually breaking all the known laws of the universe, and it has to go to where it should have gone when it died. And so I go into a process where I call upon spirit guides, my spirit guides, client spirit guides, to take the spirit or spirits away and to take them home. I call for sometimes um, souls who have been in the spirit's previous lives who love them to come for them okay. um, sometimes i'll tell the spirit that you know there's no such place as hell because uh, some spirits of course in life have been brainwashed with the the concept of hell so they yeah. think that oh my god i'm died now and i'm going to go to hell so i'm not going to go there i'll hold on i'll, I'll stay earthbound Hell doesn't exist. It's just a concept that was created by the Catholic Church to scare the shit out of people um, mm -hmm. and to keep control over them. Now you're so, upsetting people who want to know if people that did bad things went to hell, but if that's a whole other topic as well. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. I'll be upset. <laughs> Work through it, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's then a question of sending them home. There are yeah. occasions, and most of them go quite easily. Most of them go when you say, this has got to happen because what they are doing is wrong. Mm. they go usually very easily some mm. clients feel quite a release some become emotional and some clients feel absolutely mm, nothing maybe. but the subconscious says it's gone now i ask when it's gone it's gone and you know sometimes that's a beautiful way to... well we have to do those tricks xavier because we aren't using psychic ability to yeah, really identify not. when it's there and identify yeah. when it's gone so yep. we just have to ask and that's our confirmation yeah, yeah, you, you know it. you get a chill or whatever I get it that's in a our chill. Yeah. yeah yeah it's different and then all psychics would be different too and, and a hypnotherapist there could be others that are learning or doing this too and they haven't had this experience now that you're preparing them to have a think about it and and if they listen to this that means it's going to no be way you can learn it because There's no way you can learn yeah. that at the moment. It's pretty, pretty. Yeah. Well, there is. There's Steve, but I, I don't want to get him more work uh, just from the <laughs> podcast. But well, uh, I, yeah, I, include this, I include spirit release work as part of my advanced oh, regression really training. Good. So when I do, I, I do, I run a regression training course, um, which is four days long plus several online meetings. But I also run an advanced regression course. Um, and in that, we look at. Uh, ancestral regression spirit release and alien abduction regression because that has to be treated quite cautiously as well and yeah. slightly differently as well there's there's slight tweaks so you don't kind of miss anything or get stuck or yeah yeah so you, there are lots of elements to it sometimes the spirit is known to the client yeah and now in that case it isn't always good for the spirit to leave it isn't right. always it may just be that that spirit is like, let's say, the granny, the grandmother, and granny is concerned and wants to be close to the client yeah. and send, you know, do the best to send healing energy or whatever or uh, be around. But of course, their vibrational rate is different to ours in the physical. And so when they are so close to us, it affects our vibrational rate and that affects us in different ways. So if if it if it's granny and it isn't right for her to be sent home to go fully home into spirit uh, so she can reincarnate um we ask granny to back off okay you know you just just back away you're coming too close your energy is wobbling my client and please do that now um okay. so it's almost like the spirit is is then understanding spirit attachments sometimes come through from past lives Mm. So we'll sometimes find that there'll be a spirit attached, which will be with the client in previous lives several times, and it then comes out in this life. Sorry, you know, so you call well. it a spirit attachment in that case. I would just say it's a spirit guide. So you do you see it as like they're bothering them and the energy is too intense, like you just described for granny who's too much in their face kind of thing. Yeah, that again, I, I, 
I wouldn't necessarily call that a spirit guide. I would call okay. that an attachment. Okay. Um, but it's not an attachment of the negative sort. Right. Say. Okay. So, sort I just, just so I think it's the same attachment. thing as what I, but you're just calling it a different thing, but because it, it's not negative, so I was just checking like how yeah. your thoughts It may be a spirit guide, but it may not be, but it's not negative. And it's more the effect that might be negative. So if the person's having yeah. trouble, then their energy levels aren't aligned with, in this case, granny that's trying to help in this way. Yes. So it's it's wobbling. If the person is at a certain level where their energies are, you know, matched, 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 then that's yeah. not a problem. They're not seeing Steve anyway. Um, yes. so it's only so when there's an issue that there's it. a wobble. That's right. Otherwise it wouldn't come up as yeah. an issue. Yeah. So another way you could look at it, like instead of asking them to back off, you could help raise a vibration or help guide them to ways that they could maybe meditate or be more in tune so they can handle having granny around visiting. Good point. Yeah, so they're shinier yeah. and yeah. then they can cope with it because they're up. meant to be they're helping or maybe they're, they're visiting family and keeping the house safe and you don't want them to back off because that's their job. So having to not do their job, they wouldn't be there, I guess. Maybe. Well, it's just my view. So if you that's could good. encourage them to do some more things that they enjoy and love and sing and dance and do all that, whatever that brings them joy, and not worry so much, which the hypnotherapy could help them with whatever their issues are, and that will raise their vibration, and then they can sure. be on the similar. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, that's clever. That's clever. Thanks for yeah. that, Sarah. Yes, I've, I've never thought that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just that, yeah. I feel like if they're there, it's for a reason, if it's a positive yeah. 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 And it's at, least the conver- it's at least the conversation that this is causing to, I think uh, yeah. the biggest part of it is, highlighting that hey granny this is causing turbulence like something needs to happen you either need to back off or this needs to go up but either way you could ask which is it like person struggling so let's let's do one or the other to bring them closer in tune i would love to know if you try that with somebody how it goes if you ask if should it which way should it go and what they said i'll start i think thank you yeah cool that's good (laughs) And like I said, sometimes the, the past lives will bring spirit attachments through the, yeah. the client several lifetimes even. Um, and usually they have been in the past life with the clients in human form. And then they've just come through in spirit form, life after life. Um, and they've been through with them now. And Probably a bad them. question, but um, could a past life regression experience bring a spirit through yes right yeah sometimes that's what happens yeah okay so okay I, I have a client in oslo who's um uh, been working with for some time she's had breast cancer and uh, done loads of work she's done lots of alternative healing stuff and she's mm-hmm. got completely clear of breast cancer oh amazing um, um, so she's done everything she threw everything at it working on the emotional causes putting proper supplements in and nutrition and doing all sorts of stuff. And she's recently had cryotherapy where they freeze the tumors and everything. Uh-huh. So it's quite remarkable. So she's now cancer free, which is wonderful. Mm. Um, but she's found several times she goes into trance and we go back into the past life. And then the spirit is released through her. It actually comes through. And then I just tell it where to go and send it off. And, uh, and she releases it kinesthetically. It's almost like she's breathing out, choking it out, mm. um, which is quite you know, remarkable to see. Um, but, you know, <laughs> yeah, and she, she, I think she also now releasing, she's almost like a portal mm. for spirits because sometimes in sessions, a spirit which is not anything to do with her, she just, it comes through and she releases it. So it may be she's picked, you know, there's, is one that's in the house where she's living or it may be her house is a portal for spirits and so they use her as a way of moving on so yeah it's like it's a channel like a vibrational energy that looks like the great safe space to go in between helping them because of what she's been through and yeah all the heat like it's just something to do with her body i started doing that different kind of way when i learned theater healing and i started like twitching and stuff when i'm with a client and then I, I'm like, why am I twitching? I'm, one of my kids has a form of Tourette's and I'm like, am, am I picking up his vibe? Like, <laughs> like, what's going on? So I joke about it to my client saying, okay, if you see me twitching stuff, it's not Tourette's. Ha ha. I can say that because my son, <laughs> like, I'm not taking the piss. 
But um, <laughs> like, it's not that, but I got shown, I meditated on it saying, why am I, am I just more sensitive to energy now? And I got told I was a filter. Mm. So it, whatever is, even if they're just talking about their life, um, it'll come out and go through me and filters up and goes out the top of my head. And that's how I got shown. And then, but I was like, but does it leave anything in me? Cause I was just wondering that for her, like, is it okay? I'm not holding on to anything. And it's like, no, I'm just filtering it. It's like pulled towards me and through and off it goes. So that was uh, interesting because I hadn't heard that before. So I was like from somebody else experiencing that. So I thought that is really cool. Mm. Yeah, Thank you yeah, for sharing yeah, that. Yeah, now yeah. I don't feel so weird. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm not anyway, but <laughs> yes. yeah, fascinating. No, you should feel weird. weird. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the same, like like you were saying, explaining she kind of like purges yeah. it in some way. Like I have had, the mouth almost. Yeah, I don't have a big I just I just twitch and stuff, but I have had some negative ones where I've tuned in for someone when they've asked me to because they've got some big stuff going on and I've seen some really dark stuff. And I would dry reach and feel really sick and things like that as I'm getting rid of it. That's, that's I could just tell the energy is way more intense and it's actually an entity. I would say an entity rather than a spirit attachment if it's lower vibrational that's just a word but yeah, yeah. I, I, I tend not to i know i understand that i don't no, no. use the word entity because i think yeah. that sometimes can quite frighten the clients a little bit yes i don't tell it to them <laughs> yeah yeah, so, yeah i mean i'll call it a spirit attachment but i know that some of them yeah. are more entity like yeah uh, it depends on, yeah interesting yeah. i'm really fascinated by i love again the crossover of the different ways of doing things and and i love that clients people who yeah not expecting it will come to you because they never would have got that cleared if they came to me because they wouldn't come to me so they come to because that would never happen for them so it's fantastic that that you can you're able to do these things and you're learning as you go as well which is fantastic yeah yeah Yeah. fantastic way to do it no i mean just (laughs) in fact i mean that that leads me on in a way to you know the negative spirits yes because the there are these that are around which are not good and um one uh some years ago a lady called me she said i've got a i think the daughter was 13 and she's got all sorts of problems she said do you think you can help her we she can't concentrate she's dizzy a lot of the time the brain doesn't seem to work right um we've had brain scans nothing wrong with the brain um but you know she's just not right in herself and so I said, well, yeah, bring her to see me. We'll see what I can do. Amazing. Um, because, you know, as, as Michael knows, sometimes we we don't quite know exactly what we're working on. But once the subconscious moves in, it knows what to do. And so it gets results. Mm. So I said, yeah, come and And, and so the, she came. And I always remember it was a Friday evening in my office. Um, this was years ago. I mean, I don't see clients face to face now. That was the other thing. And I'll actually I'll tell you as part of this story. But... Um, she came into my office a Friday evening and this girl was really down and depressed. Intelligent girl. Mom sat in the in the room with us uh, in my office. Um, and the girl said, yeah, I, I just feel I'm not right. I'm not myself. I'm, I'm, I can be play out with my friends and I'm just not there. Um, I'm disassociating a lot of the time as well. And so I was sort of thinking, okay, I wonder what this is. And then she said something which just made me sort of think okay she said but you know there are times when it's like there's somebody inside me or something inside me Mm. and at times it's almost like it's telling me things and saying things to me and she said sometimes if I look at myself in a mirror it's as if there's something else half out and half inside me and I thought oh shit this sounds like a spirit attachment Mm. but um (laughs) I didn't want to say this because it's like the first session. This yeah. lady has brought a 13-year-old daughter. If you know, bird just jumps in with all this spooky, weird stuff, they ain't going to come back. No. Very um, professional of you to, to hold so, the explore. <laughs> so, I, anyway, I took the girl into trance and I did my usual. Anything in this life, any past lives, etc. cetera. Um, and it said, yes, I think, to past lives. But I then just did ask, are there any spirit attachments? Bang. Okay. Mm. And there were several spirits that were attached to her. And I always ask the subconscious to indicate how many. Is the one? Is the two? Is the three? So there were several spirits. Um, and so I went through my spirit release protocol. 
and several seem to go. But when I asked, have all the spirits gone, the subconscious said, no, there was no movement of the finger. And there were two that were left. And then she suddenly became really visual. She said, one of them is a little boy. And he's telling me his name is Edward. And so I then moved into kind spirit release therapist because this is a child who is lost and scared. Mm -hmm. So then I moved, I raised my vibrations. I became more compassionate, more loving. I mm. opened my heart more and guided this, this child away. Mm. And this boy seemed to go. But then she said, but standing over by your bookcase, there's a man dressed in black. He's got black hair. He's got a long black coat. And he's running his fingers across your books. And as she said this. Move out, hairs, Steve. Move out. Well, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. And I thought, oh, shit. Um, now, and the, the room went cold. Now, I... When, when I used to be doing face-to-face -face sessions in my office, um, often I could tell if there was a spirit that was attached because I could feel, when we did the spirit release, the room would go, go cold or the area around the client and me would go quite chilly. And then when the spirit had gone, the temperature came back to normal again and the room was cold. So I then did this work to move this spirit on um, and it seemed to go. But, you know, I wasn't too sure, but it seemed to go. Anyway, we finished the session. We'd, you know, been a, quite a long time doing this. Um, and I turned to the mom thinking, she's going to slate me now. She's going to go mad. I brought my daughter here for hypnotherapy. What the hell are you doing? And she just said, do you know, I thought that might be the case. Wow. I did wonder if she had spirits attached wow. to her. Wow. So I breathed a sigh of relief. Yeah. <laughs> um. You keep your license. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Um, so, the, anyway, the girl with the mom went, she felt a lot, lot better. Um, mm. And we did more work later on, and it really helped her. But now, at that time, my office, I was living and working in the same uh, same building. I, I used a room uh, downstairs uh, for seeing clients, and I lived up, upstairs. And... Um, we finished the session about nine o'clock in an evening and sort of half nine, ten-ish, and I was sitting in, just in my office and I thought, I don't feel very comfortable. It's as if something was watching me. So I thought, oh, that's a bit weird. Anyway, I then sort of went up to bed, got ready to bed, and I'm ready to bed. I thought, this, I was not comfortable. There was something in that place was watching me. Uh, and usually it's a really beautiful energy because, you know, the work that we do creates a, a, a nice energy. Mm. There was something not right. And I woke up the next morning, it was a Saturday morning, and it was still the same. I was walking around and something was there. And um, I contacted a friend of mine who's a, is an, an ex-white witch who used to do a lot of spirit release work. And I said, um, Andy, I, I think I might have picked up a spook here. Do you mind coming over and seeing if you can move it on for me. And he said, uh, yeah, 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 no problems. I'll, I'll come tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. And I said, well, can't you come today? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm busy. I'm really busy, mate. He said, I can't come today. I'll see you in the morning. Well, I spent the rest of that day on edge oh. because something was in that building. Yeah. And um, I went to bed that night under the covers, you know, um, a bit scared. Woke up the next morning and felt completely different. And when Andy arrived, he he checked the place and he said, it's gone, Burgess, it's gone. Um, I think what's happened is that your energy here is just too light and it wasn't yeah. a good place for it to be. It was okay. you know, not comfortable itself, but he said, wow. the ones in black are the ones you've got to be careful of. Wow. Um, so it was a Mexican standoff. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> I'm getting extra information for you. It's not going to be good. <laughs> Why are you saying all this? He told me that well, he he used to do uh, house clearances, you know, where he'd go to somebody's house and which a house which had been haunted, and he would move the spirit on or the ghosts on. And he said once he went to a house which was really bad, he had a very very negative vibe. Uh, and he said on one wall in the room he was working in, there was um, an old sword um, 
like a ah. display sword. Uh -huh. And he said halfway through, he was doing this clearance stuff. This sword detached itself from the wall. It shot past his head and embedded itself in the door behind him. Wow. Whoa, so he said, you, there are some nasty ones. Again, my uh, a dear friend of mine uh, who told me a lot about spirit release in my early days, he did a lot of this work. And he was a big man. He was at his height, must have been 25 stone, which is maybe at least twice the size of me. And he said in one building when he was doing some clearance work, he was picked up and thrown across the room by spirits. So um, there are the nationals, but the vast majority that come through in, in these sessions uh, are just very benign, very benign. Can I um can I, I I got some information um as you're talking and I try to ignore it so I can listen <laughs> to what you're saying, but I was getting some fill in the blanks just for curiosity's sake to explain it to you while you're talking about the boy and the dark man. I'll tell you what I get got, but did you get any information about them as or did you just clear them? Like did you find out anything about the boy, for example? Okay. Okay, well I'll tell you then. Um so what I got shown is that the boy was had gone to that 13 year old girl to warn her he had died because of that man and he would psychologically prey on children to trick them and that's what the reference to the finger of the books like um using his brain like it was some kind of reference like, like knowledge. knowledge knowledge yeah and he would pray it sounds it felt like i um felt like a serial killer to be honest um and so he detached himself to the girl like the boy attached himself first to let her know he was coming because that's how he passed and then he oh, stayed there and he wasn't impressed with you <laughs> for clearing but he left because he knew that the white witch was coming because he did not oh, want to okay. be around for that so he went elsewhere but okay. he, whatever the the guy did i I'm hoping, I feel like it's cleared it, like it helped him cross go properly because it felt like he just changed spaces. He was still around. He needed to go, go. So I feel yeah. like he did go um, okay. properly. Okay. It's okay. He's not like looming out there. But that would have yeah. messed up with the little girl's head. So it's really fantastic that you did that. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I'm just. It made a yeah. It made a big difference. And I was just so lucky that her mom understood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really was because on a different night it could have been a different reaction mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> on on that note let you got to wrap this up xavier oh. uh, i'm yes. gonna keep it going forever can, can i just before you do that can i just uh, mention Please. You, michael mentioned uh, the our oh, my youtube channel hypno four or yes is hypno the number four a l l um and um a couple of months ago, we put on there, well, all the recordings on there are audio recordings for different hypnotherapy issues, but we've put on there a live past life regression video um, uh. of one of my team members. Michael is, is one of my team members, and I have a couple of other team members um, who, who we work closely with. And um, she had a phobia of uh, deep, dark water, so we recorded we videoed it videoed it videoed the session video the regression um and uh you can watch a live past life regression session awesome. how she goes back into a horrible death in a past life and, and wow. relives it and releases it um it's not a fun process but it, anybody who is interested and curious about past life regression and regression as a subject watching it will give them a flavor of, uh, of how I work really and, and what regression is all about so uh, oh great yeah, idea that's on the that's on the site as well so we'll put free. we'll put the link in there to that yeah. actual video as well so then they can see that because that I think that is great it gives you a good example on what explorative hypnosis is as mm -hmm. opposed to a, a typical hypnotherapy yeah Yes. That's really good. Mm. Awesome. Thank you so much, Steve, for unpacking so much information again. And we feel like we definitely have to keep getting you back because you're just a wealth of information. You're fun to chat to. We love your stories. And and you, know, you get into character. And you well. put money in our PayPal straight away. So that's how it works, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thanks for nagging us to be back on our famous, famous show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
you help oh, you help us get there because yeah. people love to see you and learn and um we really appreciate yeah. you coming on the show and making time for us especially in the middle of the night exactly yeah oh, it's a great pleasure great pleasure i really enjoyed our first time you know when we did this the first time it was uh you know i did I think the last few years I've done like 40 interviews and this the, the, this is the one that I enjoyed more than anything. No. Hey. Okay, well, tonight hasn't been. Tonight's been a bit crap. <laughs> tonight was a letdown. It was a letdown right. and I want to apologise to all Sorry. the listeners, but um, <laughs> we'll have him better prep Appreciate next you time. And I love, I really love having the conversation with you too to talk about our two differences as well. It's really nice because I feel like I don't feel like I'm butting in on your interview. It's just really no, great to have an intelligent conversation um, about the differences and the similarities. And it's just fascinating for our listeners and watchers as well. So thank you. I think mm. that's lovely. I really do. I think that's lovely. That, that's, a, that's a great thing. A great, awesome. a great aspect of this talk. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> so thank you. Much love. Thanks. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. you. Much love to you. <laughs> Bye. Great to be with you. That's it for another episode. Thanks to our sponsor, Subtle Energy Sciences. Click the link in the show notes to access their full product range of quantum healing technology. And thank you so much to our Patreon supporters. We're so grateful for your contribution to keep this podcast going. If you'd like to join our Patreon, you can receive bonus full episodes, early release and monthly readings and meditations. We love to hear from you. So please comment on our YouTube channel or email us at mickandthepsychic at gmail.com. I'm a certified hypnotherapist and timeline regression therapist. If you wish to contact me to explore the source of an issue you're facing, just book a session at hernhypnosis.com and include the promo code MATP for 10% off. You can contact me on Insta and Facebook at Hearn Hypnosis. Check out my website at optimisticxavier.com.au if you feel you'd like to connect with me as a psychic medium, spiritual mentor or intuitive coach. Include the promo code MATP for 10% discount. You can also find me on Insta, LinkedIn and Facebook. We look forward to connecting with you again next time as we attempt to leave no stone unturned. Bye. All right, cool. I reckon that should be okay.